All right, welcome everybody. Uh, this is a, going to be a playing rough plays, we hope. And uh, tonight we are going to be doing a little bit of um, Homebrewed Shadow of the Demon Lord by uh, Robert Schwab Games. And uh, we are going to be playing in the world of Fallen London. Mm -hmm. So as our setting is Fallen London, I uh, have to alert to everyone. Fallen London is copyright 2015 and uh, trademarked Fail Better Games Limited, uh, www.fallenlondon.com. And this is an unofficial fan work. So with one, that, though. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So with that said, you all begin in Naples. Uh, town sort of broods on the edge of the lake. And you're all headed toward Avernus on an aging skiff known as the Lady Green. It's a smallish boat, uh, large enough for a crew of eight. And there are eight passenger berths, small cramped passenger berths on the ship. Um, you all join for your own reasons. But we're going to begin as the uh, odd little ship. Uh, and it is odd. The ship is very strange um, from what you've seen before. Uh, for one thing, the headlight doesn't work. Uh, but it also seems to be built in a very strange manner. Uh, it smells terrible. Ammonia seems to reek off of the, the headlight. Um, but the captain never turns it on. And uh, there are little beetles in all of the running lights along the uh, along the sides of the ship. You, as you look at them, they seem to give off like a, a slight phosphorescent light, um, which helps you see in the dark a little bit, although the lights aren't too great. Uh, and um, the captain themselves uh, is a snaggletoothed old rogue uh, with short, wiry hair dyed a shocking violet color. They go by Captain Vosh. And uh, they welcome you on, show you to your berth, and the ship departs. So uh, we'll start with uh, Malachi, Mac, and Florence. Mm. You guys have just been shown to your berths. You've dropped your luggage off. Um, and uh, the, the voyage is underway. Captain Vosh has told you that it should take about a day and a half to arrive in London. You have to go through the Cumaean Canal. You'll have to wait for the locks. It's a slow going voyage, but it is worth it to see the city on the other end. Is there anything you would like to do to uh, get started and get acquainted? Okay, so we each have our own rooms essentially? Yes, uh, so it's a, it's a cramped little room um, and it's the same for all of you. There's a tight little cot bed, uh, a night table and a wash basin. And that's pretty much it. You've got to live out of your suitcases, um, your... Uh, what did I bring with me? Oh, you tell me. Uh, <laughs> every, everybody can, within reason, just start off with what you think a normal traveler with your background would have. Uh, weapons are totally okay if you have them, by the way. It's I've not got... like they're gonna they're not gonna confiscate them from you on the way down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's no TSA pat down. That's right. Yeah. No, no Captain Vosh. Captain, not only does Captain Vosh not really care, Captain Vosh is holding um, a large ornate pistol that's been stuck into a uh, silk like garter belt kind of thing <laughs> and uh, also has a big long wickedly curved knife on the other side so Captain Vosh is packing I love Captain Vosh I'm just going to say that <laughs> <laughs> oh we already have a naval intrigue I see <laughs> <laughs> um, okay so we've got whatever would make sense for our characters in our suitcases. I guess for now, I'll just store, store my suitcase in the room and go out and kind of explore the deck of the ship. All right. So Mac, what you see um, is, you know, largely what you have seen on other ships you've taken. Um, it is a smallish ship. There's plenty of room for you. Uh, although it's not like a lot of room. Uh, Everybody has to unfortunately share the head. Uh, so there's sometimes waiting to use the bathroom. Um, below decks, there's a basic galley. Uh, the food isn't great, but it is plentiful. And uh, there's a cargo hold. Now, one thing you notice about the galley as you drift through it is that um, there are quite a bit of normal foods in there right now, but there's also uh, quite a bit of stuff that you don't recognize. So uh, there's a lot of tomatoes, peaches, um, 
there's some pasta that they got from Naples. Um, everybody's excited about that. All the crew are. Um, there are six crew members, and uh, there's Vash and Vash's first mate, um, a big hulking guy by the name of Buttercorn. Uh, scarred knuckles, cauliflower ears. Looks like he's seen some real, real trouble um, in his time, but he works quietly and seems to be competent at sailing. So, um, but the things you see in the galley are a little funny. Um, there is a big box of something called Murgatroyd's fungal crackers. Um, you also see a bottle of Greyfields 89. And uh, when you just lean over to take a sniff of Greyfields 89, it doesn't smell like any wine you've ever smelled before. It is uh, dark and musky and not like a red wine, more like something that you have dug out of the earth. So that is the ship. Um, yeah. That's basically it. Okay. Uh, is food, we're able to take some, or is it going to cost extra? Nope. Uh, it is uh, included in the voyage. So, the... And by the way, mm -hmm. when the three of you stepped onto the ship, uh, you know, you were waiting in line with two, uh, three other passengers. And the three other passengers all paid their way. But when you got up to the, uh, to the gangplank, uh, Captain Vosh read your name back to you crossed your name off a list and welcomed you aboard for free. So sort of an odd situation, but uh, especially since some of you arrived with very little uh, warning, <laughs> but um, anyhow, you are welcomed aboard for a free cruise down to London. Well, I mean, I do love free and if nobody's objecting, I'm certainly going to be grabbing some fruit to take while I walk to take with me as I walk out to the fore of the ship. What's the front of the ship called? Uh, the, the stern, the stern of the ship. Yeah. Okay. So I'm a professor, uh, not of boats. <laughs> of ships, excuse not me. A pro not a boat professor. Okay. <laughs> not a boat professor. <laughs> um, so as as a professor, one of the other passengers that interests you uh, is a student, a uh, serious young man, big mustache, uh, large black rimmed spectacles, and he carries around his satchel of philosophy books with him, like everywhere he goes. Um, and uh, you hear him at one point mention to another passenger, um, a woman in a, a flattering suit. Um, that he has matriculated at Benthic College, which is a place that you have never heard of before. Well, I would certainly want to ask him about Benthic College, because I have not, this, as a professor of the world, I would want to learn more. Absolutely. So, um, so you, I, I overheard this as well, and so I joined you guys in the conversation since I'm a student of philosophy as well. Oh, great. Yay. Yeah, so, so the student um, it has stepped into the galley to eat a pear. Uh, these pears are big red rich pears uh just delicious and um captain vosh has warned you if you want a pair get it because they're not going to last long down in london um so the the student is eating them and um he sees the two of you kind of approach and he raises his eyebrows but he doesn't say anything say so, so were his books obvious or does he just have a satchel uh his books are obvious they're like um have you seen those like straps that people used to use to carry their books around okay yeah 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 yeah. okay yeah and you can see it's you know titles um like uh you know the uh descartes um plato things like that the classics okay i mean i i want to start kind of like poking their brain uh to like what they've been studying and things like that uh and particularly want to like focus the conversation towards their university since i've not heard of it absolutely um so the student um says that, yes um philosophy is is in my blood my my father studied philosophy before he was killed in battle um and uh it, it's something that I, i've always wanted to learn uh, i was lucky enough to matriculate at benthic i have spent a year uh, the universities of europe and um i it's time to go down there. They say that's where all of the most revolutionary philosophy is done. Ooh. Um, uh, where is Benthic? Uh, oh, where... Benthic is part of the university. I'm sorry. Uh, one of the two colleges. The other is uh, Somerset. Down in London? Uh, yes, that's right. So you're from London originally? No. No, I'm uh, originally uh, extraction from Germany. We, uh, we lived in Bristol for a while. Uh, then back to Vienna after my father died. And um, well, they, they said that if you really want to learn the most revolutionary philosophy, you you go to Benthic. 
And I guess, where did you uh, hear about it since um, me or my friend here have ever heard of it? Mm -hmm. Well, um, might I ask, you're both educated men, uh, both educated individuals then. Um, what have you studied? <laughs> That's fine. Not philosophy, or yes, philosophy. <laughs> no, de no, definitely not philosophy. Um, probably like an English professor. Okay, yeah. Um, well, uh, if if you've been reading a lot of classic literature, you probably wouldn't have heard of it. That that's really a Somerset uh, specialty. But um, no, no, Benthic is where you go to learn um, deep philosophy. The the things that make life truly worth living. Um, it's fringe, I suppose, but it's worth learning about. I've kind of like taken pause at just like how deep this seems to be going for him. And I kind of like, you know, wish him well, I grab a pair and I start to head away because this is kind of worrying me a little bit more than anything. Okay, sure. Yeah, the pair is very good, by the way. It's, okay. it's like perfect. I excuse myself from both people and head, like I said, head towards the stern of the ship. Sure. Uh, I'll keep chatting with them for a while. Okay. Yeah. Anything you particularly want to talk about? Uh, sure. So I look at him in the eye and say, so what do you think Plato was actually talking about when he talked about the shadows in the cave? <laughs> so um, the, uh, he gets this like fervor in his eyes when you ask that exact question. And he's like, <laughs> I, you can you can read it literally, he says. You, I mean, you really can. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that there were men, you know, men and women living in that cave, but something has shadows. The interplay of shadows and light. I mean, that's that's what it's all about. That is what the deepest philosophy is about. The, the chiaroscuro. Okay. You think you <laughs> actually think Plato actually has been to, to fall in London? He he smiles and he says. He wrote of the exiles, Rose. Fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so you guys have spent some time here. Uh, Georgiana, what did yeah. you do when you joined, uh, when you stepped onto the ship? Did you just stay in your, in your room or uh, did you go out to meet some of the other people as well? Well, first, I made sure that all that these hooligans who were handling all of my luggage did not throw it into the ocean. <laughs> they are they are a rough sort, but they are competent. They, you, you feel safe enough. We will see about competence, sir. <laughs> yeah, it's a long voyage. Yeah, that's absolutely. <laughs> and then I went to go. I went to, and freshened up in my room. Okay. Yeah, uh, the wash basin's there. There's water in it, so. Yes, there's some more uh, modest accommodations than what I'm used to, but it I is. make do. <laughs> yes. That's all you can do on a, in a situation like this. Yes, there's, um, I had another booking, but I, but I, you can't turn down a free cruise back to London. It's true. London. <laughs> it's true. And it le leaves much sooner than the other one. Um, and after I freshen up, I go, decide to go look around the place and get my bearings absolutely so when you step out um onto the deck there is a woman um standing looking out on the onto the dark waters it is nighttime by the way that you leave um and uh the uh the woman is kind of just looking out over the darkness at the <laughs> lights of naples and she says i suppose it'll be some time before we see it again um Naples or land? <laughs> she smiles and she says, uh, I suppose both. Um, and she hands you a little card, um, calling card, you know, as, as people of quality do. Uh, and it says on it, <laughs> the widowed antiquarian. Huh. So you are a expert of antiques, madam? <laughs> she, uh, she brushes aside the black veil that's covering her face and looks at you, um, it sizes you up, essentially, to see if you are a um, potential customer, just an interested person. And she notices that, of course, you are wearing nice clothes, um, carrying yourself uh, with dignity. 
And she says, yes, um, I have a number of an antiquities that I am uh, going to London to research. And I believe that that's where I will find the answers to them. The answers? Yes, there are some questions about the provenance of these things. Um, you know, it's easy enough to find mm -hmm. Roman denarii and Ming terracotta soldiers. And indeed, I do have a few of those things. There are always a market for surface artifacts down in London, but um, other things I'm not so sure about. Uh, the head of a horse, not not the living horse, of course, a, a terracotta jar, but what's inside it, I haven't been able to place. A silver mirror that seems to have been made by no known dealer on the surface world. Something odd is going on here, and the things that are finding their way up to the surface are worth investigating. What brings you to London? Well, I'm more or less returning home. Ah, well. After a, it was a brief, uh, brief vacation, to say the least. They always are, she says, especially for Londoners. <laughs> Might I ask, um, what corner are you interested in all the artifacts that the Empire has scavenged throughout the world or a certain area that takes your interest? My dear, I have uh, many, many artifacts from throughout the world and I am willing to investigate anything that catches my fancy. And where will you be conducting your studies, if I may ask? Well, there are a number of individuals in London who are concerned with such things. Um, the Forgotten Quarter, of course, is an important place. Um, and of course, I'll be spending some time at the university. But um, I, I question whether or not I won't find my way out to um, some of those places that they whisper about across the Untersee. We'll see. This is my first time to London. I don't know what kind of difficulties oh. I'll encounter. Well, then I wish you safe travels, madam. Hopefully we will cross paths there and I can take you to some of my favorite spots if I may have the pleasure. She smiles and she says, you have my card. Uh, you may look me up um, at the boarding house in Vail Garden. Thank you. <laughs> and I reach into my purse and I hand her one of my own calling cards. Wonderful. All right. So you have made an acquaintance. Let's uh, zip back to um, let's zip back to Mac. Yes. So you go to you go to the stern of the ship. Mm -hmm. You look out, um, and what you see in front of you is a fairly large lake. But you're very quickly coming up upon um, some big concrete pillars uh, that appear to be the start of the lock system. And it doesn't take very long. Probably three or four minutes since you spent some time getting acquainted and comfortable and talking to people um, before you come up to those large concrete pillars and you go into a dark, wet, musty smelling vault. And then the pumps start and you hear all this water underneath you being pumped away and you go down and down and down <laughs> and it seems to take a very long time <laughs> is there anything you would like to do while you're waiting for the uh water to be pumped out from underneath the ship no i'm just curious how long this is going to take at this point <laughs> I, okay. like, I want to watch the process so one thing that is extremely interesting is that the broken headlamp um when you reach the bottom so this does take quite a while uh you know, at first you're like, maybe it'll be five minutes, maybe it'll be 10 minutes. It seems to take about 25 minutes for them to finally pump out all this water. It takes a long time. Um, when you reach the bottom and the pumps stop, the lamp flickers to life. And it's bright. And it smells bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, powerful ammonia smell comes off of it. But yeah, it it's uh, very bright. And about the same time, all the little beetles that live inside the, the running lamps they uh, open their chitinous backs and you see a bright green phosphorescence from them and everything is suddenly lit up and yeah you're in like a vault and in front of you is a huge cave complex and the ship as the uh the vault door opens up you get to sail out into this huge cave complex sparkling stalagmites and stalactites 
geodes everywhere. It's beautiful, but it's weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and toadstools are growing on everything. Um, I'm yeah, kind of you are in a furnace. with all of it. Like, there's just, like, so much I've never seen before happening all at once. Absolutely. Um, and someone approaches next to you, and uh, it's the woman in the the nice cut suit. And she says, um, oh, this isn't even the beginning. We're still in the Kumeyan Canal. When you get there, just wait. It's, I, I never want to leave. Well, why did you leave then this time? She, uh, she also takes out a uh, little um, calling card and she hands it to you. And it says, uh, barrister at law. Um, and uh, she says, I'm, I'm a solicitor. I'm currently working on contract with Penstock, um, London's premier real estate dealer. There were things I needed to sell on the surface. And uh, now finally I can return home. Have you been away for long? We, no, um, we can't leave for long, of course. Um, Londoners, it's the sun. It does something to the mind. But uh, no, I, I was up there for two weeks and that was long enough, believe me. Well, this will be my first time going down to even see it. Ah, well, welcome. The city it glitters. It's beautiful. The gas lamps are... Sorry, I'm a little overcome. I can't wait to get home. This is... Yeah, I've been away too long. Uh, well, I offer her a card of my own uh, and say, well, then maybe so you can show me around sometime. I would, uh, I would enjoy that. My offices are uh, in the side streets by the bazaar. You can follow the card. I'll have to look you up then. Please do. And uh, she actually goes back into her room. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll sit out here and watch for a little bit. So. Sure. Yeah. Um, the sailors walk back and forth. Um, the guests walk around. Um, you see all the other guests. And uh, yeah. I asked one of the sailors passing by how long it'll be till we actually reach London. Uh, well, um, probably still a day yet from here. Um, but we'll we'll put in for some supplies down at the funging station, and uh, we'll have a nice right supper. Sounds proper, wonderful. Proper tea and everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Well, knowing that it's going to be so long, I decided to head back to my room. All right. Yeah. Anybody else want to do anything? Malachi, um, Georgia. Oh, I and uh, and Avi, you feel like you would be up for heading out anytime you want. Hmm. I think I'll stay in my room until we're properly back in London. Okay, so yeah, well. Yeah, so I'll walk along the deck just checking out those lights from the Beatles. Yeah, um, okay, so as someone who's interested in the natural world, this fascinates you. You've seen phosphorescent beetles before uh, you know lightning bugs those sort of things um but the light that these things are giving off is just like enormous um one of the sailors who's walking by you says um oh down on the untasy they use those in uh the light buoys you know, they they last for generations they don't need much to eat you know yeah where do they uh, come from oh here and there everywhere you ba barely uh walk down the street without stepping on the bloody things and yet people don't go blind from staring at these lights, then, if they're all over the streets? <laughs> he says, there's enough darkness down in the knees. But it's kind of homey, you know? It's, uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Up there on the surface, uh, if you feel like I'm going to fall into the sky. That would be an interesting thing to happen. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it has. And he moves along, shipping. He's, he's like, carrying, like, a, a big crate, so he pulls it along <coughs> into the cargo hold. And he's gone. And Georgiana, what was it that you wanted to do? Um, I think I'll go down to the galley and get some fruit and take it back to my room. Absolutely. So the pears have been more or less picked over by this point. Um, there are, you know that there are food supplies that they picked up in Naples that they are taking back down to London. But those are all packed away in the big crates. Um, there are some peaches left, though, and a couple of nice round apples. So take your pick. <laughs> take a few peaches great yeah all right so um 
one of the, of course, major personalities on this trip is uh, Captain Vash. And Vash is uh, a big talker, but they also are spending a lot of time making sure that the ship is being steered properly. So um, you don't really get a chance to talk to them immediately. Uh, but as uh, the day goes by, oh, I'm sorry, really quick, before I advance time, Malachi, was there anything else that you wanted to do before going back to your room? I do stop one of the sailors and inquire as to why the captain keeps referring to himself in the plural. Oh, so uh, <laughs> the the um, sailor tells you, down in London, right, mate? There are people with the faces of squids. Uh, squids, I tell you. Uh, and believe me, it is not for us to determine what gender a person puts on themselves, yeah? Captain Vosh doesn't particularly uh, show one gender or the other. They just, they like, they like being called they. So at the, at this uh, rather shocking news that I had not uh, heard before, I do uh, adjust my pistol belt. Right, like, <laughs> closer to the range of my hand. <laughs> And, and, and when when the sailor sees you do that, they they go, uh, oh, don't worry about the rubberies, they they, they barely heard a fly. I I bid him good night and uh, head back to my room. Okay, yeah. So, um, time passes. You all spend some time waiting in your rooms, um, and before long, you feel the ship start to slow. And then you hear Captain Vash's voice, and Va Vash is uh, laughing. Um, they've put on a big black great coat, and they are putting into port at the Funging Station, sort of the halfway point between the surface and London. Um, and you hear the ship kind of settle to a stop, put out a gangplank, and then Vash and three of the sailors uh, put out to land such land as it is. Anybody want to do anything? Or are you just going to wait? I pack up whatever belongings I'd unpacked over the night before and get ready to depart. Ready to depart. Okay. So um, you're packing up your, your suitcase and you know you, you step out onto the, uh, the deck and you realize, oh wait, there's barely any room here at all. So the funging station turns out to be a very narrow strip of land about the size of like a house and it's just like mushrooms everywhere um up and down the walls uh like a huge field of of mushrooms but all crammed onto a tight little narrow spot and built out of what looks like maybe wood is a little building um out of which a steady stream of people comes and goes um and these people are shaggy their hair has spores in it. Their eyes have spores in it. It looks like there might be spores like stuck in their arm hair um, and growing out of their ears. And they cough every once in a while with this weird kind of yellowy cough. And um, they are out there growing mushrooms. They saw them down. They bring them in. Um, but there's barely any room at all. And uh, the, one of the sailors who's still on the deck goes, Oh no, we're sleeping in our bunks tonight. This is just where we replenish supplies. I'd go back in and go back to sleep. Okay, yeah. Um, so, when Vash returns, they're carrying uh, a huge platter of stuff. Food, bottles of wine, things like that. And a couple of like grouchy-looking sailors are carrying much heavier supplies in a big uh, crate put the crate down in the, the hold. And um, Vash then yells out, Supper time! Anybody want supper? Come down to the galley! I'm all about that. <laughs> all right. Sure. I'm I, I, I follow. <laughs> all right. So Vash has laid out um, a pretty wonderful-looking beast. Uh, and it's kind of buffet-style. There's little 
uh, tin plates that you can pick up what you want. Uh, but the main table in the middle of the galley has been just overflowing with fungal beer, fungal crackers, um, gray fields, uh, just like lots of stuff like that. Um, various funguses seem to be a, a big thing, although you do see um, some little uh, like clams and uh, shrimp and oysters and a bunch of yeah other seafood and uh, people are tucking in um the the barrister she's got a big plate and she's just going to town um the student has picked out a handful of shrimp and is eating very slowly uh, kind of contemplatively and sipping on a fungal beer um and the uh the antiquarian ha is eating very carefully to make sure she doesn't get food on her veil. Um, anybody want to pick up anything in particular? I'll try a fungal drink. Yeah. So the fungal beer turns out to be uh, rather good. Um, dark, heady, uh, like so many of the things that you've seen so far. Uh, earthy, but delicious in a lot of ways. Might take some getting used to. It's definitely not like a, a well hopped beer from the surface, but it's still pretty good. I'm digging into some seafood. Yeah, the seafood's great, um, top notch. I mean, it's fresh um, and it's you know clean, even though they seem to have gotten it from this funging station. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's good. Oh, that is I definitely my most important quality: is clean and safe. Yeah. Georgiana. I will also get some seafood, uh, probably some oysters and shrimp. Ah, yes. And uh, some wine. <laughs> yeah, the wine. Um, so you have been to, you are from London. The wine is just as you remember it, 89, the great dark vintage. Uh, not quite as good as the uh, 79, but it's it's still pretty good. Yeah, well, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> right, right. There, will, there will be time when you get back to Vale Garden. I mean, the Mandrake has all of the vintages you could want. They've got Broken Giant. I mean, the good stuff. Um, so anyways, uh, while you are sitting here eating, um, the, the captain is going on a bit. Um, they're talking to the student. And the student has asked some kind of question about history. Uh, and now they are deep in the captain's sea tales. Um, they're saying about the, this time that they were coming back up from the elder continent and there was this mix up with some of the white and golds from the Connet and uh, the ship ended up having to run dark for, uh, well, it must've been eight leagues before they got away from those trimarans. And uh, anyhow, yes. So you asked the question about the name. Yeah. Uh, the, the lady green were the wife of old Lord green. Uh, they own the fancy house on Pickwick street in Vale garden. Anyhow, Lord green, he gets it in his head to investigate relics of the fourth city on Bullbone Island. So he charters a ship and off they go. Uh, before they arrive though, the Z whips up this terrible storm and the lady disappears over the side without so much as a peep broke the Lord's heart, sold all his fourth city relics and went into mourning. And of course the lady found her way back eventually, but now all she does is sing dirges. Uh, I was the first mate on the ship, of course, and so I named it after her. And then they just go on like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I'm just enthralled in the story because it's wonderful, and I I very much appreciate a good story. <laughs> okay. Well, I grab some seafood and go uh, sit by Georgiana. Okay. And yeah. Ask her what her home is like. My home. Well. Sir, I don't think we've been properly introduced for you to be asking about my home. <laughs> uh, sorry for my uh, forwardness. This, this whole experience has been much stranger than I initially expected. And I can tell that you seemed more calm on the boat and where we're heading than you were on the dock before you boarded the ships. So I, I, I'm just yes. assuming that you are actually from beneath. Yes, it's a quite a tale about how I got to Naples, but it was a quick, well, it wasn't supposed to be a quick vacation, but it turned into one. Oh, I mean, it's as it says in the, in the pamphlets, I'm sure you've read about London. <laughs> I read them, but uh, yes, experience it. Experience it is something I was not prepared for. Yes, I mean, 
losing myself. <laughs> I mean, I usually... I suspect that you're headed towards the university? I am, yes. From... I'm... Well, actually, I, let me, I apologize. Let me introduce myself uh, before we go much further. So, my name is uh, Malachi Morrison. I'm from Michigan uh, in the United States. I studied uh, philosophy with uh, John Dewey under pragmatism, and I, I'm an avid hunter. Uh, <laughs> uh, that explains the forwardness, you uh, Americans. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suspect that you will find it to be much a little more refined than your um, Michigan. Uh, however, we do have some hunting that goes on in the country. Uh, away what, from what? the city? Pardon? Oh, what do they hunt? What do we hunt? You, you hunt blemigans. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> they just like shocked. Like, we hunt what? Blemigans <laughs> and frequently rats. <laughs> <laughs> the rats in Fall of London are huge, aren't they? <laughs> they are, yeah. Especially the, the ratus fabers, which we can you'll meet later on, but uh, yeah, and sometimes you hunt sorrow spiders. Okay, so I, I, start, I start talking with her about uh, Blemigans and sorrow spiders. Yeah. Something else can happen. All right, so while you guys are in the middle of your conversation, all of a sudden, there's a shout from one of the passenger berths, and um, the student, who has stepped away for a little bit, comes out, is the first time you've seen him with a significant amount of emotion and uh he says my reading candles they're gone except for the nub and he r puts out his his hand and there's like a candle but it's just like an inch of candle is left like what just what was left in the uh candlestick um and he's like these look like teeth marks did someone eat my candle and I don't suppose any of you react to that, but the captain goes, the <laughs> captain goes white, just like horrified. And the captain goes, what in the bleeding hells were you doing bringing candles onto my ship? Were they, do you know, were they Foxfire? And the, the kid is like, I, I don't, I don't know. They were candles. Um, and the Vash says, well, doesn't matter one way or the other. Uh, steps into the captain's cabin, and when they remove, when they return, they are also holding candles. They've got like three, uh, and they're wide candles, probably like three inches in diameter, um, and they're sort of low, and they're this bright green color. Um, and the foxfires, snuffers always eat foxfires, and uh, Vash lights the three candles, and then they go okay. Everybody out on the deck. I mean, oh, okay. Everybody. They slam on your door, Avi. Are we in London yet? Snuffers, get out. I suppose if needs must. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you emerge from your passenger berth. Do you want to describe yourself to everybody? I am a very well put together, unfinished person. Yes. I am very well buttoned up, straight up to my throat. I'm made of clay and I have no gender. Right. <laughs> so there is a clay person standing on the deck beside you. They are looking at you like they are above you, which in many ways they feel they are. Um, <laughs> and Everyone has been brought out on the deck, all of the uh, passengers, all of the uh, crew, and the captain pulls the pistol out of their uh, sash, and they point it at, uh, let me see here, I will go ahead and give it a quick roll just to find out who it is. All right, so uh, they point the gun at... Um, Mac, what? Go, step, step forward, up to the candle. What? Me? 
Step forward up to the candle. I mean, I do. I'm terrified at this point, but I step All forward. Right. I don't want to get shot. Okay, you step up to the candle. The captain looks at you for a second and then gestures with the pistol. Step away. Okay. <laughs> like, hurry back in line. <laughs> Turn the pistol on the, the student. Go, step forward. I know it was your candle. Step forward anyway. Candles. Or the student steps forward, looks at the candle for a second. All right, away. And it goes on like this. Uh, the captain is holding everyone at gunpoint and makes everybody walk next to the candle. Um, and... Oh, awesome. Uh, okay, so when um, they get to the crew, the crew walks by one by one, and then Buttercorn <laughs> steps up. And Buttercorn looks at the candle, and Buttercorn looks at Vash, and Buttercorn jams the candle in his mouth and just starts gnawing away at it. Just <laughs> devours this candle. And Vash blasts him in the head. <laughs> and, Poor Buttercorn. Yep. And uh, so Buttercorn goes down and Vash whips out the dagger and starts sawing away at Buttercorn's head. Just I have chops, so many questions. Chops his head off. Then when the head is removed, looks at all of you and slides Buttercorn's face off of the head. And underneath Buttercorn's face is this weird, chitinous bug person. And Vash takes the, the fleshy part of the face and throws it into the water, and then takes the chitinous head and throws it over the other side of the uh, water, and then goes, well, if anybody wants to go through his pockets, they can. I'm going to my room. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I agree we're done with, here. With the let me know when we get to London. And I we're back. nearly there. We'll be there in six hours. I actually uh, walk up to the body and start poking it to see if I can feel where the uh, if there's bug in this underneath the skin. So yes, but it's like extremely difficult to tell. Um, it's a pretty I, I, with your background. I'm not going to make you roll for this. You are able to do a really quick. Um, investigation of this body uh and it seems like a normal person's body at first and then uh as you kind of like pry around where the decapitation mark was you sort of see that the skin doesn't quite adhere as nicely as it should and you're able to pry under a little bit and there's this chitinous body underneath yeah oh. big bug person Ooh. yep yeah all right well actually uh saying that how it's not actually attached to the thing i just i kind of turn it Flip him over onto his stomach and kind of cut, pull my knife and cut down his uh, back there. Trying to heal the world. Very right, so yeah. glad I've done the so, so what you find is that, yeah, this is like skin. Like this is a human body with underneath it is a bug person. Um, oh. Yeah, blood and everything pools around. And eventually Vash goes, hey, you're getting blood all over my deck. Do it over the side if you're going to do that. <laughs> but they look at him and say, you just blew this guy's head off. You put the blood here first. Look, I don't tolerate snuffers on my boat. I know. I'm trying to learn, figure out what the heck this thing is. Snuffer. They're from the Elder Continent. What is the Elder Continent? Yeah, say, what's oh. the Elder Continent? South, south of London. Uh, we've got a colony down there, and I swear on every boat that the colony sends up, there's five or more snuffers, it seems like. There's more snuffers in London every year. Uh, Did I get blood on my dress? <laughs> you may have, but when you ask that, Vash looks kind of pissed off, and they're like, you know Buttercorn was a person once, right? They were my first mate, and now they're a snuffer. <laughs> Wait, so, that, so I kind of jerk up at that dimension there. Like, Wait a second. So this wasn't just like skin suit someone made? Nope. Snuffers take over real people most of the like, time. They like, grow out from the inside out? Uh, it's not entirely clear how they do it. They might just make a little mask and then put the mask on. Mm. All right. I kick, the, I kick the rest of the body overboard. All right, cool. Go wash up. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, uh, anybody want to do anything else after this? I want to sleep and hope I don't okay. have nightmares. <laughs> okay. That's a, a good thing to 
wish for, but we'll see. I'm with that gentleman over there that I'm going back to my quarters to uh, assess the damage and rest. Sounds good. Uh, Malachi, anything else you want to do? I'm going to go shower. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, there are no showers on the boat, but there is a nice wash basin, and you're able to clean yourself up pretty well. Um, yeah, you you have learned some interesting stuff from this scientific investigation. Um, Hopefully the uh, knowledge will protect me from the nightmares that are surely sure to come. <laughs> oh, knowledge doesn't protect you from nightmares. It invites them down here. Anyhow. We're all right. Screwed. So you, you all rest. And a few hours later, you put into harbor in London at Wolfstack Docks. The city looms before you like a great crab covered in its scuttling young. Along the shore, fashionably dressed persons stroll beneath sturdy gas lamps. Gangs of longshoremen lift innumerable cargo boxes punctuated here and there by blue clad constables and black clad constables. Even from here, it's clear that there's a distinction between the forces of law, though you can't quite puzzle out what from here. One of the black constables eyes a box of books with a wary eye, then picks two out and confiscates them. An individual wrapped from head to toe in bandages, dickers with a fungal bloom cellar over the price of a corsage. A rat the size of a dog stand on, stands on its back legs and holds the hand of a blind woman, guiding her through the crowd. A clay man delivers a sack of coal to something that looks like a man with a squid for a face. A long-limbed devil emerges from a handsome brass and oak phaeton carriage pulled by two shaggy but gleaming white horses. This is London. At your dock, the way to the shore is barred by a confrontation. It looks like it's about time to get off the boat. There's a gangplank out. The sailors are waiting with everybody's gear and, and um, you know their luggage and everything. But... They're blocked by a small crowd that's standing on the actual dock. On the side closest to you, there are a pair of boat captains, a bunch of dock workers, and some crew. Probably 25 people total. On the other side are a gang of men armed with truncheons. Probably about 15 of these guys. But in front of them stands a freakishly tall individual wearing a long black cloak and a fine top hat. And it looks like there's some kind of argument going on. And it looks like it's a pretty heated one. Like violence could spring forth at any moment. I mean, I've got my suitcase and I kind of want to eavesdrop if I can. Absolutely. So the tall individual, like very tall, probably a good shoulder height above everybody else, is speaking in this high, cold voice. And they're saying, this is an important Package. It must be delivered to the Carnelian Coast immediately. Do you, do you know what happens to parabola linen when it's left alone for too long? It'll unweave like anything from dream. And the captains are like, absolutely not. We're not going back down there. We'd have to sail through Iron Republic waters. We're not doing it. I'm just I'm watching to see what plays out if nobody else interrupts it. So what ends up happening is um, your sailors and Vash are like trying to get a space at the dock and they're throwing their ropes out, trying to make sure that, you know, they get anchored. And all of a sudden, the very tall individual sees you guys coming in and it just pushes through the crowd. And even though the people closer to you are hostile to it, they let it. So all of the all the dock workers kind of step out of the way. And the very tall individual comes up to the side of the boat and says, ah, new arrivals. And it looks at each of you in turn and says, souls unspoilt by the manifest incalcitrance of our fair city? Yes, you'll do very well. And uh, which, which of you is the captain? Vash steps forward. I'm the captain of this ship. What do you want? But... They don't say it with like the same kind of pugilance as they normally would. Um, they're a little bit cowed by this person. And the very tall individual leans forward and it says, I will deny you a dock permit unless you make a shipment for me. One crate of parabola linen to the Carnelian coast. And Vash is like, that's, that's extortion. That's... And then the 
the very tall individual says, yes, but it's in the contract. And Vasha's like, oh. <laughs> All right. And everybody kind of looks surprised. And Vasha's like, I have to do it. I have to take it. I'm like, all right, but we mean get off the boat first? <laughs> the very tall individual laughs and says, no, you're going to carry this for me. Down to the Carnelian coast. All of you. Well, now that we're back in proper society, I'm out on the deck and I'm just nodding along going, yes, he has to take the contract, you know. It's yes. true. What, but, what, but, uh, what contract is it? But how can we as, as guests be beholden to the captain's contract? Even better, says the, the uh, tall individual. As guests of this fair city, you have nowhere to stay, nor shall you, unless you make this delivery for me. Oh. I will see to it that any of your accommodations or lodgings contracts are waived. Void. Invalid. Nice. Size them up. Sounds like he's get the kind of the, the feeling off of them. Is that yeah? He's absolutely telling one hundred percent the truth. A hundred percent. Yeah, I'm not even gonna have you roll for that. Like, all right. <laughs> the authority with which this thing carries itself is immense. Like, all right then. So, have I, as a person who's never been to London and only heard rumors, heard of what this person might be? Okay, so that you will have to give me a roll okay. for because people do talk about them, but it's less common. Okay. So go ahead and give me um, a give me a d20 and add your intelligence to it. Okay. Like the full intelligence? Uh, no, just the um, the bonus, which is one, I think. Since I, yeah, it should be 11, right? Yeah. Okay, so do I not have any bonuses because I'm just working with base stats, or? Uh, so you will get plus two to your strength. Okay. But everything else you're gonna get negative one too because. Oh, is ten the base? Yeah, ten's the base. Okay, cool. Mostly because claymen get pushed around in London society a lot, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. All right, so, what's up? I'm from do you know here, what it is? I know. You would do know, I know what, what this. It is? Is. Yeah, and actually, so do you, uh, Mac. This is a master of the bazaar. And if you're not mistaken, it's making you carry um, parabola linen. It's probably Mr. Vales who trades in cloth and uh, things like that. So basically, there are an unknown number of these tall, often very polite, but very legalistic and very powerful merchants who basically run the city now. Yes, the traitor empress still technically runs the city as the queen, um, but she has very little power on the streets. The masters of the bazaar are the ones that really run things. They run the black clad constables, the special, <clears throat> excuse me, the special constables. Um, whereas the blue clad constables are still under the power of the queen, but they have way less power now. So, so we know it would be folly to refuse him. You do know that, yeah. Okay. I, I, I stand aghast at, at actually seeing one of the masters of the bazaar. It's true. You don't see them very often. Occasionally they'll pop into places, but not very often. And to be, it's honestly something of an honor to be hired by one. I don't know if you would see it that way as you're being forced into the contract, but. But we could um, use that to our benefit later if we could. survive. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I, although I have a question about lodging. Um, are you. Sir, are you saying you will acquisition my apartment? Ah, the the uh, master smiles broadly and says, "A native. What you will find is that I am, <clears throat> I am demanding, and yet, I am also fair. Should you accomplish this small task for me, I shall compensate you in the form of lodgings near the bazaar herself. The finest accommodations." in the city without cost without rent they shall be yours outright i'll have penstock uh notarize them immediately and it looks over at the the barrister and it says oh yes speaking of penstock you'll be able to uh, notarize the contract for him won't you and the, the 
solicitor nods. Yeah, I will. Uh, says, then notarize it now. Draw up a small contract for me. She reaches around in a bag and starts writing feverishly. And uh, the master withdraws a hand, a gloved hand, from inside the very large flowing robe it's wearing. And it stamps the contract. There. It's all done. You'll have a place of your own in the bizarre side streets. And won't that make you proud? I pipe up and say, is she the only one that gets that? Or can I? Huh. Uh, no, no. A suite of apartments for all of you. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, Ooh. that seems like a great way to start down here. I'm in. <laughs> Right. It is better than you could imagine. <laughs> it, the... it, would be, it would be much more practical for entertaining a higher caliber guests, I suppose. <laughs> Indeed it shall. Now please, and it turns away, and the crowd is starting to disperse now that the anger and frustration have sort of been pushed onto you guys. It says, uh, refill with, with fuel and supplies. You'll want to set sail immediately. And Vash is like, I, yes, We'll set sail immediately. And Your first quest. Went. Yeah. <laughs> and it's forced upon you. <laughs> so anyway, oh. at this point, the um, master does seem to let the student and the barrister and the um, antiquarian off for whatever reason. And the student turns to you and says, uh, to Max specifically, mm -hmm. and says, I wouldn't want to be pushed around by something like it. <clears throat> if, if you agree, come see me in Charlie Square after the, after the return. Okay. Uh, do they offer I, me a card or anything? Any way I can find them? No. Um, but he says, and if you should, if you could, bring supplies for the work. And it wink. He winks, and heads back into the crowd. And you notice as he walks into the crowd that not only is he carrying his satchel of books and um, his stuff, but he's also got this big carpet bag that you didn't notice before. Must have been stowed in his uh, in his berth. And uh, he's happily walking away. It sort of jingles a little bit as he walks. A bad feeling about that guy. <laughs> <laughs> like like something terrible will happen. If I ignore him, or if I go here with him. <laughs> Some people are no better than they are. <laughs> You're a very large individual. Person. Yeah. Yes, that is a factual uh, statement about myself. Just wanted to get that out there. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we established that. <laughs> okay. I am definitely intrigued by this giant clay person, though. Okay, so it's 8.30. We got a little bit of time. Okay, so I want to do the next part of this. It won't take very long. So the ship sets sail. You, um, it, it takes a while, though. Like, you don't know days and nights down here. Someone's got clocks. Like, days and nights are reckonable. But you don't have anything that would really allow you to easily figure that out. So a lot of time passes. And you're pretty bored. And you don't really know why you're stuck on this ship. And... Um, you know, they had you guys stay and they let the other passengers off. But uh, masters are weird. And you know that. And you've heard the legends of the masters. And so anyway, um, you do start noticing some weird things happening as you go further south. Uh, for example, at one point, one of the ropes on the ship uh, sits up like a snake and tries to bite you. Um, and then one of the um, sailors has to go and stomp on it. <laughs> and when it eventually settles down, uh, the uh, sailor turns and looks at um, you guys who are all kind of standing there and says, ah, we're near the Iron Republic. Laws of nature don't work right around here. <laughs> Wait, they just stop working? <laughs> They're different every day. It's maddening. We're not going to put in there. <laughs> but how do they function then? <laughs> it is the domain of devils. You do not question them. Wait, like I agree devils. with the, I agree with the claim person. And so does the sailor. They all nod it's got knowingly. Okay. So, I'm learning so much so fast. 
<laughs> Matt is just all... like, like trying to absorb everything in. Like, it's a bit of a yeah. Is there still some fungus wine somewhere? Is there fungus? Absolutely. I'm going to, I, I, you know what? I'm throwing my ladyship out the window for like three seconds and I'm going to uncork it and just drink straight from the bottle right now. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a great idea. And you get about uh, two good mouthfuls of Greyfields 89 in your mouth when all of a sudden the ship rocks horribly to the side. And those of you still out on the deck, are, are the other three of you out on the deck, not in the galley? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You see something swooping down from the roof of the neath at you. Something with huge wings and sharp talons. And one of the sailors screams, Vake! The Vake! The and then Vake he's plucked, as in only one? <laughs> as in the Vake. And then he is plucked from the deck of the ship, taken up into the air, and you hear nothing but shrieks of pain. Um, I want to get inside. <laughs> All right. I'm going to stay right where I am. <laughs> yeah. So you lost a little bit of wine when the ship listed to the side, but you're able to really r rally very quickly and drink more of it. <laughs> <laughs> Did I get any, any spill on my dress, though? That's the, that's the real question. Not a drop. <laughs> Far too much. <laughs> Yeah. The mental image I have that. is of the deck like going back back and forth as it rocks because of the Vakes attack. Exactly. And Avi is just standing there, his arms behind his back, not moving an inch, just kind of staring off into the darkness. Yep, swaying. And <laughs> then the Vake hits again. And this time it slams into the deck itself. And it tears up a huge chunk of wood. Um, is anybody far, trying to fight it? Or are we hiding and hoping for the best? What's the I plan? Drew my, I drew my revolver at the sound of the first shriek, but I'm not sure where am I in in, in position with the bank. So we're going to do theater of the mind combat in this game, um, which means that we're not going to be messing too much with the, uh, the squares here. Um, you are close enough to take a shot at it any time. It's a yeah, small ship. Do. Yeah. Okay. okay. So go ahead and give me a roll. Okay, so as soon as he as soon as he lands the second time here. Okay. And uh, uh, add your agility if you have any. I think it's ten. So just give me a d twenty. Okay. Well, I just checked my weapons to see what kind of weapons I might have from my last sojourn in Fallen London, and I forgot a scar was a weapon. <laughs> Some of the things are uh, my favorite is like um, a bad attitude or whatever. Like <laughs> mm -hmm. that sounds uh, like something I would have. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm just gonna punch it. Twenty-one. Jeez. Oh, you got what? A twenty-one? Oh, plus ten. It's plus ten of the, the agility, right? Oh, so you got an eleven. Okay. Um, right. sorry. Well, yeah, you you only add the number after 10. ten. Yeah. Yeah. So eleven, you get a plus one. Oh. And the goal you. is the goal is always to either get above ten if it's a task you're trying to do. Or above the opponent's score. So if it's trying to dodge you, uh -huh. agility. If it's trying to uh, like tank poison or something, it'd be strength. So okay. it's a really simple game, which is why I didn't bother explaining it to people because it's just D20 plus modifier, try to beat 10 or try to beat uh, like agility or armor class or whatever. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's it. Um, so uh, that uh, rather, Avi, you take a swing at it. And you are like, this is a, a, a perfect punch, but it's so fast. It just flickers out of the way. You should have hit it, but then your arm is where it was and it's not where it was anymore. Um, instead, it's tearing up the deck. It's like it's trying to get into the cargo hold. Mm. Um, and, and Malachi, you take a shot at it um, and the bullet goes right over its shoulder. It, Looks like it might have hit it if it had moved just slightly. This thing is spot on um, no. with its dodges, yeah. If I can get the uh, rope that turned into a snake earlier, yeah. I'm going to throw the other end of it to someone who's across the deck from me and the uh, creature. I've gone okay. running for help from other people to try and get more people out to do something. 
Sure. So the uh, the sailors have their shovels. They have like um, big pieces of deck equipment, and they're running up toward the vake. Uh, Vash is standing uh, behind the helm and is just shooting their pistol at it over and over and over again. Um, and yet somehow the vake is just totally calm. This weird winged monster, and it's tearing into the the deck, and it's knocking sailors off. And then all of a sudden it sees seems to see what it's looking for. Um, and Avi, you throw the rope toward uh, Mac, actually. Mac, what do you do? I mean, I see a rope coming at me. I'm presuming there's some sort of plan here, so I try to catch it. All right, give me a quick agility roll. My agility is butts. Yeah, just go ahead and give me the agility roll. Oh, look at that. It's a bug. It, it's, the snake is still a snake. <laughs> no! it, it stings you right in the nose. And uh, no! it doesn't hurt exactly because it's still a rope. But you're like, you have the reaction as if a snake were biting you in the face. And you, you dodge back and the rope falls on the ground and hisses at you. <laughs> this and isn't then... going to go well if you act like this. <laughs> it's a snake! And then the vake blasts out of the side of the ship from the cargo hold. And if you know anything about the seaworthiness of vessels, you know this is not a good thing. Yeah. Is there water any begins land? water begins to fill the uh, ship. And before you know it, the ship is down. Fade to black. You wake up. You wake up. All of you, except Avi, you don't actually at any point go unconscious here. You instead just sort of follow the currents as they carry everybody, everybody else in the ship. Uh, because where else would you go? <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and what you find is that they are washing up on a small sandy beach. And behind you, behind the beach, uh, is a crumbling ruin of a castle. Um, do you have... Go ahead and give me an, an intellect roll. Just you, Avi. So yeah, that would be uh, d20 minus one. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. There's a big castle there. And it looks like it's pretty old. You don't... It's, a it's a lovely castle. I can tell you that. It has the perfect aesthetics of fallen London within it. And I fully believe that someone of quality must have lived there once. Someone of quality must have lived there because it is big. Uh, but only three little spots of it are still standing, unfortunately. But here on the, the beach, you do notice that not only did um, your uh, fellow passengers not drown, which is convenient <laughs> because they won't turn into drownies, um, but mm -hmm. that uh, they're more or less okay. They have washed up on the beach. And as you look around on the beach, you see that there is a small encampment here. So people were here not too long ago. Um, and in the encampment, there is a, a campsite, which has gone cold. There is um, a rifle with the insignia of the Royal Navy on it. And there is a cavalry saber, also with the insignia of the Royal Navy on it. Mm -hmm. I pick up the rifle. We're okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, yeah. You guys, mm -hmm. you, you come too. You spit water out, but none of you have drowned. You seem okay. Um, cold. But yes, sodden. My wine is gone. Your things, some of them wash up behind you. All of my suits, all of my dresses. <laughs> Both of which are lost to the waves, unfortunately. Um, some of your things do wash up on the beach. The currents brought you all here. But um, there's no, nothing to be seen of Vash or the other sailors. The vake is gone. The ship is gone. Well, of course my companions are okay. All travelers must return to the place they departed from, and if they do not, then they are not travelers. That's so, true, as they say, <laughs> so um, the captain must not have been a proper traveler, and they will be missed. But it is not also not surprising because no one is a proper traveler unless they are a clay man or noble. So, I will simply take the saber. All right, great. So you have a clay saber. You have a uh, cavalry saber. Mm -hmm. uh, you will do 1d6 plus 1 damage with that at this point. Um, and you took, the, you took the rifle, Malachi? Yes. Okay. There are bullets. Um, it is a... Uh, so this is 1890. 
the rifles um, are bad. Well, well, they are also they're they're reloadable. They're I mean they don't take that long to reload. That you don't require powder or anything. So okay. uh, you'll be able to fire once a turn, um, as long as like nobody's standing right next to you, in which case you'll have a little more trouble. It's like a um, like a le lever action. Yeah. Cavalry uh, carbine. Yep. Okay. Um. So, um, does anybody else have weapons? I would like to find a weapon. I was gonna say, okay. is there anything around that can be used? Is there a so, big stick? So my, there, uh, yeah, there's, there is some junk that is from the uh, ship that washes up with you. Um, you find a, a club, um, a cigar wrapped in a rose gate wrapper, and a small vial of honey. Uh, and then you also find a knife. So that's it. That's what shows up. I mean, I'll take the honey and the cigar and stick them in a pocket unless anybody else wants to fight over them. Then I'll pick up the knife. And so you get the club then, Georgiana. All right. This is very uncouth. It's a, okay. Would you rather yeah, use a... the bladed weapon, my lady? A sophisticated weapon for a sophisticated woman. A club. <laughs> <laughs> At least that one you won't get as much blood on you. Please, oh, the club is far oh. too unsophisticated for some one such as myself to take it. So I, I'm sticking with my saber. Wonderful. Did I have survive the uh, wash? I get lost you, in it did survive the wash, believe it or not. You only have six bullets in it, but... It is still five. securely strapped onto you. Five. I'm sorry. Five bullets. And it is securely strapped onto you. It'll probably and you, work. My dear, and you, my dear professor, are not educated in the effects of blood force trauma, are you? Nope. <laughs> Clearly not. Do I look like the kind of person who's ever been in a fight? <laughs> okay. Well, perhaps with some uh, bookworms, maybe. Well, I mean... <laughs> so what would you like to do you uh robinson crusoe like maroonies i will start heading yeah. towards the castle i don't care if anyone else starts following me okay I mean, the clay man seems to know what they're doing i'm following the clay man sounds good all right would so, i be able to recognize the castle oh you might yeah you live down here um Go ahead and give me an intellect roll and uh, roll 1d6 along with it and add that to the roll. Okay, so that's one. That so one. In, in the Shadow of the Demon Lord rules, this is called a boon. You roll your regular roll plus a um, 1d6. You add your 1d6 and um, what you get counts. So if you beat 10 between the two rolls, you know. Boons represent favorable circumstances and skills. Oh, I did not do that right. <laughs> That's slash R, not R slash, sorry. Yeah, I... <coughs> so I opened my door for one cat, and now all of them are coming in. Yep. <laughs> so what, actually, what is the command to uh, roll dice? It is, it is slash R. Then space. And, space and whatever you want to roll 1d20 plus whatever so unfortunately um the roll didn't turn out super great so neither do you know where you are georgiana but Hello. when you follow avi inside you are in a crumbling castle very nice yeah i'm just testing it yeah unfortunately you don't have the context to know what this is so okay. i can't give it to you but i'll just you test do it out. You do see something very interesting. So oh. the, the room you step into is actually very nicely appointed. There are big red rugs on the ground, a big red tapestry on the wall, and stenciled onto the stone on the inside are the words, uh, Station 5, Supplemental Propulsion. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Ms. Mark. <laughs> you very, really upset, Ms. Mark. Yeah. There was a uh, there's a fire truck going past outside. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, 
this room is beautiful. It has a big fireplace in it, um, but there's blood stains all over the carpeting. Um, and the, bro the brocade, one of the brocaded chairs is broken. The mahogany table has been shoved over. That is um, mahogany. It is, <laughs> Sorry, I had to. It is fine mahogany. Yeah. Many oh, leather-bound yeah. books on the walls, but they've all been knocked out. There's been a fight here. Uh, the other thing you notice about this room are heavy uh, rubber and um, wire cables hooked to the wall in an orderly but extremely complex pattern. There are a bunch of cables in here, and they're all going in different directions. Okay, would I know what that engraving meant? You might. Give me another roll with a boon, please. Can I also? Right. Or... Yes, you can. Yep. Can I make... Do I get to roll the same thing as Jolie? Yeah, and the other two of you, not yet. Well, I'm I was going to ask, do I notice any sort of pattern of the really complex nature of Oh, the sure. Pairing? Yeah, please, give me a roll, also intellect, with a boon. Okay. All right. Malachi, you can make this too. Okay. So the, the two of you with a deep education can make the science type roll. The other two of you can make a context roll. So Jolie, yeah, Georgiana, you know what's going on here. Oh man, this is cool. great. Now you guys are kicking butt. <laughs> oh, come on. Smart. Sorry, slash R. Yeah. I thought I put down the slash. No slashies. So I'll start with the cables. This is part of a generator machine. These are ingoing and outgoing power couplings. Uh, they are providing power or receiving power from something somewhere else. The, the big cables are actually waterproof cables. So you suspect it's not on this island. It might be on another island nearby. It would have to be nearby, but yeah. As for the other two of you, you recognize the Station 5. That is a designation of the Royal Navy. So this is a Royal Navy outpost. Um, and you know that they have several, like, not exactly secret, but like quiet stations. And 5 is not one you have ever heard of. So, you don't know squat about five. We just but, know that it's royal, the Royal Navy. Yeah. Yep. So I just know. know that it's proper society to be in this castle. That's true. <laughs> and it looks like they had a nice little room here before some unpleasantness happened. Hmm. Oh, the other thing you all notice, and this you don't even need perception to know, it smells heavenly in here. Like someone is cooking a sumptuous feast. Currently? Was... Or did? Yeah. I, do right I now. have a sense of smell? Probably. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, can't, I can't eat things you, and I can't sleep. So I'm going to guess probably not. Well, yeah. I don't well, know. I can, no. I can see things. I, I think you probably could. Yeah, you can smell it and it smells like cooking food, but like you don't care, really. Mm -hmm. It's just, it doesn't, it's not good. Since or it's, you don't have the sensation of flavor, do you, can you tell what the smells are easier? Because you just know, like, that smell means this. You have never smelled this before, but it smells heavenly. Hmm. Huh. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. You have never smelled this before, Avi. You don't care how it smells. To everybody else, it smells good. Like, I don't know. Preparation of vegetables, meat, everything. So we're in a ruined castle. Okay. So we're in a ruined castle. Yep. On a seemingly somewhat, somewhat deserted island. Correct. But has at least very recently been deserted, apparently, by the Royal Navy in a secret kind of outpost for that for them. So I'm assuming there must be either a ship nearby or a ship that would, would return. This is the Royal Navy. Yeah, but look around this room. Something bad happened. Why is someone still cooking? Yeah, that was my next point. <laughs> well, I'm yeah, going to go and try and find the source of the snow. Okay. Sure. So there is a, so a connecting edge. door. <laughs> so if you step through the door, you see mm -hmm. um, two dead royal um, marines. And Avi and Georgiana, they appear to be permanently dead. Um, their, their throats have been removed. Uh, and they are lying on the ground uh, in the middle of a room where they were packing ammunition. And there are two completed grenades sitting on the table. And... Mm -hmm. uh, their pistols are gone, um, but there are two grenades that nobody's touched. And otherwise, 
this room was like a preparation room basically it's uh got all of the stuff to have been an armory but there's no like weapons left in here and there's more of the cables there's more electrical equipment in here i'm guessing the smell isn't them like it's not their hand left in the fire or anything like nope. that it, it's not coming from them um the smell okay. seems to be coming from the next room which is actually it looks like a, a small little um passageway into a courtyard I mean, so it's actually an open air courtyard john i know okay, you then well I don't care not grab alive. the explosives so if nobody yep. else is getting them i'm taking their <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> grab the grenades is someone, is someone having a barbecue outside I'm going yeah, i'm going it's to an, go yeah. out and see Outdoor if there's any yeah, civilization sure. yeah i don't care about these soldiers little lives i'm gonna keep walking Okay. I've got two grenades. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so you step into the courtyard, and what you see in the courtyard is the shelter of a shipwrecked survivor. Robinson Crusoe would be well at home here. Crates serve as chairs and a table out in front of a crude shelter, and upon the crate table, a well-appointed feast is laid out. Fungal blooms, solace fruit, stuffed zebat, and an odd little fruit like plantains. And in the center is the piece de resistance, a trussed and roasted man with the haircut of a Royal Marine, complete with a shriveled surface apple in his mouth. He smells heavenly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Behind the shack is a mess of power couplings and a large silent brass generator dominating the courtyard. Mm -hmm. And then from the door of the shelter, something for the well, eat and tell it your darkest secret. Uh, shouts that from the door? Yes, the, the, the voice is from the door. Okay. I'm like clutching one of the grenades. <laughs> Please do not blow us all the kingdom come. It might be what better than whatever that is planned for. So are you seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah. So I, I spread out really on the side of the table um, with my rifle pointing towards the door. Okay. Say, who, who's there? Well, a long-haired, lank man steps into the doorway. He smiles. His teeth are long, and his mouth is a bright red. And he says, eat. The golden sailors are more of a danger to you than I am. If you knew what was good for you, you'd destroy this station and all the scrimshod bones that it sits upon. Explain what you mean, or I'll shoot you. <laughs> I am destined for the well. Meeting? Shoot me if you want. Did, but, did, did, did you kill everyone here? He smiles, and he says, the flashes of light from the southern continent? You haven't wondered? The who to what now? This is the way things are. <laughs> Okay. Do I know what he's talking about? Do you? No, or you actually no. Even if you even if you live in London, it's very confusing what he's talking about. There are. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> Everybody, give me an intelligence roll, please. Do I need a boon or no boon? No boon for this one. Just your intelligence modifier. Okay. Obviously, I'm gonna spend the rest of the scene pretending that they know what's up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Mal Malachi, you and um, Mac oh. understand that something oh. is happening here, which oh, holy crap! Okay, Jolie, there are there's an intersection of two very strange things happening here. You have heard stories of on the southern continent flashes of light, like as if the sun were rising from the southern continent, and whenever anybody talks about it, they're terrified. Like, the sun shouldn't be rising in the south of the Neath. This is not where the sun is. But you have also heard other stories, darker stories, about why you shouldn't go to the well at night, about reckonings, and about hungers and appetites that fester down here in the dark. And what you su suspect is that this is the intersection of two very old and very painful secrets that London sits upon and that those secrets don't like each other that much, but that either of them would be a major danger to that city that you love so much. 
I'm not going to say anything, actually, and I'm just going to stare. I'm going to look at this man uh, Terrified? critically about what he's listening to, what he's saying, and explain. Would you want what? What did he say? He said, "You know, that he has prepared yeah, something for the well, and if you want, you can tell the well your darkest secret." Is there a well here? What do you know of the well? He, you don't immediately see one, but you can't see behind him. Uh, I, I asked that of him. Oh, you ask him? Yeah. He says, yes. I've dug one here. Well, no. I have restored one here. They had a well of their own, but it wasn't right. What's, what lives in the well? well? A reckoning will not be postponed indefinitely, he says. Oh. Now, I whisper to uh, Malachi. Or, yeah, Malachi? Yep. That's it. No. That way. no, 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 wait. No, no. I'm Mac. Mac. Or, no. no. You're Mac. Mac? I whisper to Malachi. Mac. Yeah. <laughs> do not, That's good. Do not, ask, do not ask things. Do not ask questions of things you do not wish to know the answer. That to. is not in my nature. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll be a great person down here. <laughs> I have a question. Have all the questions. You, you have a question? And, yeah, um, <laughs> what kind of clothes is this guy wearing? Like a description of them, kind of? Is he naked? Ragged. <laughs> Just kind of like they, dun they... brown kind of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, cool. a brown suit that has gotten wet over and over again and is becoming ragged. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's fine. I don't care. Done. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so um, he looks at all of you and he says, well, if you're not going to stop me, I'm going to have my last meal. And he sits down at the crate table and he pulls out a big long knife Dude. and he starts cutting a flank off of the man. Mm. <laughs> Throw a grenade at him! <laughs> <laughs> I just chuck it out of reflex and I chuck a grenade at him. Okay. Well, so okay. so these, are, these are old style grenades. These are like those um, round bombs that you see like, they're like a bob bomb basically. Uh -huh. So do you light it and then throw it at him? Do, would I know enough to know that I should light it first? It's got a I wick mean, on it. Okay. Yeah, it would have like a fuse. Well, if it's got yeah. a fuse, is there fire next to me? There. So with the grenades were flint and, and steel. Okay. So you could definitely do that. Yeah. Light it. And if nobody stops me, throw it. <laughs> okay. So if nobody stops him, uh, no one stops Mac, rather. Um, I the, uh, him. Them, yes. If no one stops them, then the grenade. So I, I try to stop him. I see oh. him trying to throw it, but I say, wait, just a couple, like a split second too late. Okay, cool. Wait. And then the <laughs> grenade goes and it rolls to a stop at the foot of the bloody mouthed man. And as the I, wick. Out of the way. I, I like yeah, it. okay, yeah, jump. Um, <laughs> as, as the bloody mouthed man sees it land, they just smile and put the morsel of flesh into their mouth and they swallow really quick before it goes off oh. and uh so it's 3d6 damage Ooh, okay and you blow off one of this guy's legs but he's still alive mm. the the bloody feast explodes all over the place getting on all of you actually um yeah My and clothing. The, yes, those of you wearing clothing, which you all are wearing, um, and uh, the guy's leg flies off in a different direction, and he falls backwards, just like laughing, kind of, madly. Um, mm. It is now his turn. So what he does is, rather than confront you, his leg is gone. He crawls back in through the door he came out of, and you is lose track of him. Is it my turn yet, or? Yep, it is now yeah. your turn. Oh, so it is the PC's turn. <coughs> the way that okay. combat works in uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord is you can decide to take a fast turn or a slow turn. Mm -hmm. Fast turn means you move or attack. Slow turn means you move and attack. PCs always go before um, villains, NPCs. But if an NPC takes a fast turn, it goes before slow PCs. So that's... So it goes okay. fast PC, fast NPC, slow PC, slow NPC. Correct. Okay. 
I, I'm okay, assuming that I'm means just... I took a fast turn. <laughs> yes. Well, I the... surprise round. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then I'm just going to like casually walk over to where I saw the uh, bloody mouth man leave. Yeah. And I'm going to draw my saber, and if I can find him, I would like to just drive it through his head. Absolutely. I'm freaking out, by the way, because I'm covered in person. Yeah, you are. Mm -hmm. um, and so, Avi, when you step into the, um, the shack, it's very small. But as promised, there is a well in there. And it's not one that he dug exactly. It is an old well made of stone and dug pretty deep into the center of the castle. And it goes down quite a ways. And the man is sitting on the side of the well. And mm -hmm. he just smiles. And he lets you drive the saber into his head. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have to roll damage for that? Or does he yes, just please. have a saber just, in his head? Just roll damage, yeah. All right. And yeah, that's wait, enough. That's, that's plus 1d6 because I've got the saber, isn't it? Uh, Yeah. Okay, so let me just roll that real quick. Yep. Oh, yeah. More than enough. Nine damage. Yeah. You, you jam it right through his head. With the damage done from his leg, he's he's dead. Um, but when you go to pull the saber out of his head, he slips down the well. And even if you grab for him, it's like there's a force pulling him down. And he's gone. Right down the well. Mm -hmm. I uh, okay. I stand up. I'm like just freaking to, out uh, and screaming. I'll go to the back and uh, yank the other grenade out of his hand. Okay. Kills the rest of us. <laughs> I'm just like Thank screaming. You. <laughs> Why oh, are you so upset? Do you get upset when you get covered with dirt? And I stop screaming at that and I just kind of stare. The dirt is the blood of my people. Why are you upset? That's actually makes a lot more sense than I gave it credit for. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think this I could, uh, philosoph I, profound philosoph philosophical realization uh, helps him calm down. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a right mind to whack you over the head with this club now after you have dirtied my dress. Do you know how much it costs to get this dress made? And from the dressmaker I had to get it from, there is a wait list. Who it was destroyed in the water. <laughs> I, You're co we're covered in people. <laughs> and I start screaming again. <laughs> Whose fault is that? Whose fault is that that we're covered in people? <laughs> Creepy man eating people. Is he really yeah, people? He, you know. No, you you're right. That was not things. people. That was something else. Then you're fine. The person that he was so eating and is now this. all over me was people, most likely. You don't know that for certain. Like, why do you make so much sense? That was <laughs> <laughs> so That's I, my I, job, is to make sense. <laughs> like, I uh, pipe up and get, try to get everyone uh, focused back on uh, figuring out how the heck we're going to get off this island. Sure. So... Avi, are you the only one inside the uh, shack? The room with the well? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I so you're right so. next to the well. Um, you notice that inside this little shack, there's not much. There's, um, you know, some drinking water. There is uh, a Royal Navy rifle, the second Royal Navy rifle from the two guys that were dead in the other room. Mm -hmm. um, and it is just sort of sitting next to the little bed that he's made out of rags in here. Uh, there's also a pendant. And it's got a glass bead on the end of the pendant, and it's full of a cloudy, translucent liquid, which you don't okay. immediately... Well, you might recognize it. Go ahead and give me an intelligence roll real quick. All right. Presumably, me and Georgiana are, are fighting about who got the other covered and stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was your fault. You, you're the one who threw the grenade. <laughs> it wasn't my fault. He was eating people. Like, okay, yeah, you too. But you, okay, you too. Go, go down oh, to the water. Go, go down to the beach and uh, wash off. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Bobby, you actually do know what this is because you've been here for a while and you've done mm -hmm. a lot of service for your family. Um, this is melted laker mm -hmm. inside the little bead. And you have no idea why someone would put melted neath snow into a, a little bead, but it's in there. 
Mm-hmm. And it sort of smells like uh, like that ammonia smell comes from it a little bit. Yeah. Okay. It's just, I'll, just... I'll take that. I'll take that as a curiosity. I'm not going to tell my group about the rest of the stuff because, like, I don't care. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, cool. So I, I'd like to check the guy's stuff, his sure. little shack, because what he said about the Southern Lights and the uh, well have piqued my interest. I'm down trying to wash guts out of my hair. All right. So, well, Georgie, don't wash guts out of your hair. <laughs> Georgie, Adam, when you go through his stuff, you find the Royal Navy rifle. Um, you also okay. find some ores that have been like incorporated into his um, into his shack, and then out behind the generator, you find a rowboat, and it's got a little uh, faded Royal Navy insignia on it. Excellent. Um, I'm gonna take the rifle. Um, I have a little pouch, and I'm gonna put take all the. I'm gonna like harvest all the little ores around there. Okay. That's valuable stuff, and. I guess I will go back and say if, to uh, Mac and be like, you've pulled yourself together. I think I found a way off this godforsaken island. I think I'm good. <laughs> Finally. All right. There's a rowboat over here. So everybody give me a perception roll. Are, are you planning on taking the rowboat off? Is everybody in agreement? see anywhere on? we can go? No. <laughs> That's my first question. Where the frick are we going to roll? I, I suggest we uh, take the rowboat down to the, the beach where we wash ashore to that camp that was set up. We yeah. set up for a little while and spend some time exploring just what's in our immediate area to figure out if we where exactly we are. I'm just going to assume that I will be the one to do all the heavy work and I will start messing with the rowboat and start like setting up to row it, basically. Yeah, that's... Yeah, you're, you are you are kept busy. Unfortunately, it's not easy to. Uh... If you press up in the uh, chat box there, that will take you to the last thing you typed in. So like your old rolls and everything. Cool. Andy, except my last roll was this type. Yeah. Oh, dang it! What are we, what are we doing wrong? Because now that's your last roll. <laughs> your last. It, it pulls if, up your last thing you typed. If you're yeah. on a computer, there's also a button on the left hand side of the screen that you can push that has a. a mess with the numbers there yeah like that okay nice. so malachi you rolled a 13 <laughs> yeah I rolled, I rolled a critical failure uh which i will go ahead and give you a little extra information due to that um so malachi you are uh helping avi carry the um the boat and yeah. you stop for a second, and Avi doesn't stop that. because Avi doesn't need to rest. Avi is a clay person. And you wipe some sweat off your brow, and you see something in the south. And at first, you think it's that glint of light that the weird man in the uh, shack was talking about. But it's not exactly. And as you look closer, you see it's actually a battleship that looks like it could be made out of gold or something. It's, it's like a in the water or on the on the on the ground? In the water, it's a sailing ship with little people with red insignias on them, a big battleship with lots of guns, and it's glowing with a faint golden light. I guess how far offshore? Very far away from you, barely at the edge of your vision, but you can see it, and you can see little people walking around on it in little red uniforms, and can you distinguish color at that range. Uh. I mean, it's it's a bright color. There are bright colors with little bright people walking on them. And uh, then as you look at it, uh, you see like a glint of light. Maybe someone's looking at you through a spyglass. And then the boat starts to steam further south. Away from us? Away from you. And before long, it's gone. Oh. So by waving my arms like this, yep. do it. So I just completely missed it. Yeah, you unfortunately did. Okay, that's fair. Um, so Malika is the only one that saw that. Everybody else was busy. But, and here's, I think, where we can end our, our Adventure Zero. It only takes a couple of uh, hours before another ship appears on the horizon. This one's sailing south toward you from the north. And this is a Royal Navy frigate. And before long, uh, Royal Navy soldiers come off of it. And a hard-eyed officer comes up to each of you. He looks you all in the eyes very carefully. And then After, he... I'm assuming he uh, 
I'm assuming he managed to talk me from talk me down from pointing my gun at this guy. Oh, if you're pointing your gun at him, yeah, he he um, pulls his gun out and he says, uh, not, like, "Not like at him, but like the low ready." Oh, okay, so <laughs> so you've got guns and yeah, he the the rowboats from the frigate come up. There's an officer and a bunch of like regular Royal Navy soldiers on it, Royal Marines, and um, they all look like normal people. Uh, and the officer steps forward onto the beach and says, oh, there were survivors. You know, the master sent us south after the boat that uh, was destroyed down here. Yes, oh, we do require a passage back to uh, the proper city. But we didn't deliver the goods. The master has decided to commute your uh, contract. You will still, however, receive your lodgings. Apparently, oh, the, the master to, awesome. the master told me to deliver this message. <clears throat> okay. You have done the work that I sought. Come home now, Mister Vales. Well, that's enough for me. I'm getting on the ship. Cool. Was the linen for the creepy bird thing? I don't even know. I'm just getting on the ship. <laughs> the officer I've doesn't answer so any more questions, out. but you get the di distinct feeling you've been played. Somehow. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah. Actual, like something has happened. Yeah. That is that is my life. So <laughs> um, yeah. the I other thing that. that you notice is that although this appeared to be a Royal Navy station, when the, the officer gets off, he looks around as if he's never seen this place before, investigates the castle, and then before long you hear an explosion. And the officer has destroyed the uh, big generator. And he comes back covered in some dust and some brass. And he says, well, that ought to slow him down for a little bit. And then he gets everybody on the boat and he turns the frigate around and sails it back to London. And that's where Adventure Zero ends. I'm so confused. <laughs> oh, wonderfully weird. Yeah. I love it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mac is, Mac's head is exploding right now. So this was intended. <laughs> yeah. So this was intended Max's a, never a going little to bit calm down. to overwhelm you, but I think that things will become a little more clear if we'd like to play a few more times. Um, an introduction to kind of the way that intrigues pile on intrigues in this setting. Uh, weird creatures play each other against other weird creatures, and people are kind of at the center of it as pawns and playthings. So. Well, I mean, Mac didn't get to sleep with anyone, so we have to play. That's right, yeah. Well, and next time you'll actually get to go to the university. So there's lots of people there to sleep with. So That's literally Mac's thing. Yeah. <laughs> you, can raise, you can raise Greek Village. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what are our first impressions? Did we enjoy this? Did we like this? Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. It's fun. I love it, yes. Cool. I so, so bad. I bet you got a few of the. Happened. I'm sorry. Oh, you like it? Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. We will. We will return to London the next. Next time, I oh, promise. Good. Proper society. That's right. <laughs> Indeed. I, I would like to have a cup of tea with you, Harry person. Avi, I would like to have a cup of tea with you. You'd be I... the only dignified person here. What <laughs> 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 I thought it's just a bit to uh, try to pick up on some of these things, names and places and things. Yeah, so there are a lot of names and a lot of places, and I didn't want to overwhelm you with those. I wanted to give you the themes, the the people and the things that are happening here. I I'm relatively sure, Bet, that you know most of the references I dropped there. A fair number of them, yeah. Yeah, but uh, they are all established canon things. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I, I know that I grabbed some dream honey, I'm assuming. Yeah, you got prisoner's honey. <laughs> and uh, I'd like us to be able to investigate that a little bit next time. Mm -hmm. um, so. Oh, you mean when Mac just eats it because he's because they're hungry? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see. Yeah. So what I would like is um, I think everybody's got access to the Shadow of the Demon Lord books, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I think so. The links to them? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Um, so I think right now, Will, you and I are sharing them. I'm just going to make a copy and move it to the Fallen London shared folder. Sure. Um, 
we're going to need to actually make character sheets now. So what we need to do, yeah, you're going to start getting like abilities and stuff. So it's becoming kind of important that you know more about it. Um, yes. So the core. I'm going to be the healer. So I have created two new classes. And um, what I would request is that you do not pick magician and you do not pick priest and the reason for that is those are not really th there are priests in the neath the the church is still alive and well the anglican church um but it's different <laughs> and uh it's weird um and that's you know fine that's what it's supposed to be um well, i'm going to be a packed person yeah so instead i've created two um two new classes, which are shared with you in the uh, Fallen London shared folder that I sent today. Um, and those are Scholar, in which you find an interesting object with some unique properties, and you use that as the source of your main powers. So you might find a correspondence sigil, you might find um, a ball of a strange metal, which I can explain a little more if you pick that. Um, but those are that's how scholars gain their powers. They investigate objects and items that they find in the neath. Um, if you pick Pact Maker, you gain your power by making a deal with a patron. That might be something from behind mirrors. That might be something from the deep undersea. Um, there are lots of things that can give you abilities if you're willing to take the costs that come with them. So when you pick your patron, you discover one tradition. Um, and at the bottom, you can pick Curse, divination, enchantment, forbidden, illusion, necromancy, shadow, teleportation, time, air, chaos, earth, life, primal, song, storm, or water. I will then tell you which patron has caught your eye based on what you pick. And you'll learn a little bit more about the lore behind the world. So I, I'm kind of tempted to make a pact of time if that's possible for me as a clay person. It is. Because awesome. a traveler is always returning. True. And I think clay people have somewhere they definitely need to return to. So, mm -hmm. yeah, certainly. Cool. Salt hears your I prayers. Like also very what, do you, what were you thinking? Just all be pack makers, makers of different pack disciplines. Pack <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could totally play it that way. I, I really want to lean toward um, role play and like muted combat. We'll do combat, but I mean, you guys blew the seeker's legs off right away, so he didn't really get to fight you. Um, <laughs> but, uh, grenades <laughs> yeah there are lots of things um a closer look at these at the scholar class yeah so that um if you do the scholar you will start learning things about the correspondence you'll start learning things about um the flukes and the rubbery men uh you might also learn some things about some of the fringe science of the neath there's a lot of technological advancement coming out of caminus yards and things like that um uh, Cotterell and Hather Sage. So uh, those are great places to look for some power as well. I think I'll, that definitely sounds interesting to me. Cool. So um, I think that that, what's that? I'm sorry, Julie. Oh, sorry. I thought, I would thought the, what would it mean to make a, be a pack maker with a lesion? So you are probably going to find something out about what happens behind mirrors if you start doing a pact with illusion. Um, you might learn a little bit of stage magic to begin with, and then you will start finding out what things come out of parabola. That sounds interesting. Yep. Fun and we'll time. talk about, if you pick that, you'll you'll find out more, but yeah. Sounds ominous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, amazing. <laughs> So with that, I mean, feel free to dive deeper into the lore. There's a couple of really good wikis out there, but if you do that, tread carefully because some of the reveals in the campaign are canonical stuff. Um, and uh, we'll start looking at London proper next time we get together. Um, I'll send out a request for another Friday soon. Thanks to everybody for joining me. Um, if we make this into a PRP, playing Rough Listeners, thanks for joining us. And uh, yeah, have, have yeah. A... And thanks to all of our guests for this evening. Yes, thank you, Bet. Thank you, uh, William, and thank you, Jolie. 
So have a great night, everybody. And uh, we'll talk soon. See you then. Nice to meet you, Julian Bat. Nice to meet you. Bye. And we're out.